Okay, so I'm going to talk about the marine mammals of the UK. And actually, this photograph was taken about 10 minutes from my house about 30 years ago, more of which a bit later on. Okay, just a bit of background on me. I've been involved in a, a charity, Marine Life, for, for 27 years now, which uh, monitors whales and dolphins and seabirds around the coast of the UK. And uh, I've been the research director for the charity since 2005. And you can see there we've put a, got pretty good coverage of southern Britain. All those green lines there are the surveys we've made in uh, UK waters. OK, so in the UK, then we have uh, 28 species have been recorded, uh, which is uh, over a quarter of the world's uh, species of whales and dolphins and but only about 15 of those occur each year and if you look at this map of of the UK you can see there's a red line around the coast that's the 12 nautical mile limit and then beyond that we've got the economic zone of the UK which stretches out into much deeper waters so the, the animals highlighted in red on the left are the ones that you could see in, in uh, inshore 12 nautical mile waters. But the bluer ones, you have to go much further offshore. And so species, for example, like the Sowerby's beaked whale and the northern bottlenose whale and the white-sided dolphin do occur in pretty decent numbers in UK waters. But unless you get well offshore off northwest scotland you're almost uh high it's highly unlikely that you're going to see those animals same for things like sperm whales and uh and sort of humpbacks and fin whales they're more associated with the deeper waters of the northern bay of biscay which you can see on the on the map there, there's that wedge of land, uh, we, sorry, wedge of uh, the economic zone that just goes out to the edge of the slope of the continental shelf. So, Nate, yeah, also we're talking about sea mammals on this uh, uh, evening. So uh, that includes two species of seal, the harbour seal on the left there, grey seal in the middle, and otters as well, which... Uh, don't really go offshore, but you do get them in coastal areas feeding. So Nature Trek have two dedicated wildlife cruises around in the British Isles. And uh, on those trips, you stand a pretty good chance of seeing seven species of whale and dolphin, as well as uh, seals and otters. So the first of those, is a fantastic looks like a fantastic trip it's uh, i should point out i haven't done any of these uk cru cruises myself uh, so uh, but but they do look uh, i've been to a lot of those islands that are highlighted on these tours and uh, so here's the first one so perhaps the the real standout there is a trip to st kilda in the middle of the 9 day trip but it goes to a lot of other amazing uh, islands as well. Very beautiful area. And it's on this sort of small ship, the Seahorse 2, which uh, hosts 11 guests. So, yeah, as I say, a nine day trip. And this uh, just shows you a, a couple of tables of sightings from last year. One in May and another one in July. So the May trip had some really good encounters of minke whale with uh, seen on three days and there's a pod of killer whale seen a pod of orcas a really big super pod of common dolphins and then porpoises most days as well as otters and and good numbers of seals every day so you know a really fantastic trip the july one was was different again because uh, there's quite a few sightings of white bee dolphin on that one seen on three dates not a not an easy animal to connect with in uk waters most of them are a bit they are they are on the continental shelf but they are further offshore because they don't tend to 
co-occur with bottlenose dolphins. So wherever you get bottlenose, you don't tend to get white beaks. But yeah, you know, really good trip, good mix of sightings. And you can see from this uh, screen grab, it's a fantastic trip for a whole range of wildlife, as well as the stunning uh, Scottish island scenery. So, you know, white-tailed eagles, breeding skewers, cliff nesting seabirds in, in large quantities, and, uh, you know, lots of other seabirds like fulmers as well. So if you want to go on that uh, tour, uh, unfortunately, it's already booked for, for this year, but there are some four dates for next year. So there's usually four trips per annum for this nine day tour. And so speak to uh, Alistair in the office about that. OK, the next one is another Scottish wildlife cruise. And this one, uh, the other one goes from Oban. This one goes from Ullapool, actually. It's a slightly shorter trip, lasting seven days on this comfy vessel that harbors eight guests. I'm going to try and pronounce this, but I might be wrong. The MV Monolith, perhaps. Hopefully, maybe somebody will correct me at uh, question time. But again, another really interesting itinerary passing through the Minch Sea which is a stronghold for white beak dolphin. And then uh, visiting, uh, you know, Skye as well as, uh, as well as the Isle of Lewis. Just got one trip report from last year for that tour, but it does highlight that it's an excellent trip. Good numbers of common dolphins every day, same for Harbour Porpoise. Uh, white beak dolphins seen on one of the days and then several encounters of minky well including uh, over 10 on one of the days which must have been quite a fantastic spectacle once again uh, good numbers of seals most days and looking at the pictures in the brochure it looks uh, like you're going to see some amazing other wildlife as well lots of seabirds puffins and black guillemots and then divers as well black-throated and red-throated divers as well as the as i say the beautiful island scenery and all the flowers and land birds too so once again alison looks after this tour and there's a couple of what couple of trips coming up one in each year both in July. So once again, speak to uh, Alison in the in the office if you're interested in uh, doing one of those trips. OK, but my, my involvement in Nature Trek and marine animals in a UK context is to do these day trips in and around Lime Bay that have been running since 2009, actually. And <coughs> excuse me. Lime Bay is a very rich area for whales and dolphins. Just over the last five years, uh, five, excuse me, 10 species have been seen. And uh, this is the whale that was on the very first slide. And you can see there, if, you, if you're familiar with the Dorset coastline, you've got the golden cap in the background. And it was a humpback scene present for over a week uh, back in 1992. So we've got a couple of options that we utilise. Uh, the first day trip runs out of Brixham, and that's on this very comfy boat, the Spot On. The real standout feature of this boat, well, there's a couple of standout features. One is you can get onto the bow, so you can see the dolphins bow riding. But the other thing is there's a flybridge above the wheelhouse, which enables me and, uh, and others to... to get some extra height to try and spot the dolphins from uh, from the from the greater visibility that that brings uh, i've got a really good skipper there ross parham who's uh he, he he's his eyes are like 10 by 50 he spots dolphins you know that i can barely see through the binoculars he's just a fantastic observer which helps so well we mix up the the trips in terms of where we go, we usually do about 80 miles. So it's a long day. We're, we're out by about eight o'clock, come back about sort of five-ish. And uh, we cover a lot of sea ground. 
and, and where we go depends on on the weather conditions the sea surface temperature whether if we can see any gradients in uh, sea temperature they're often good good productive areas but also we look for where the fishing vessels are as well and because that would give us an indication of where the prey items are which dolphins and whales might be feeding on but but we'll we'll usually go to this area east of uh, Brixham into the western middle part of Lime Bay and that's because if you look at this uh, map here of survey effort you can see that the red dots of this rarer dolphin the white beak dolphin are concentrated in that area so we always try and check that area out because that has been in previous years the standout species on this trip and we know that they are concentrated in that area because there's a lot of red uh, sort of purple colored track lines where we haven't seen that dolphin. So it's a real anom anomaly this uh, white beak dolphin, as you can see from this distribution map on the right, where the red dots represent occurrence. So it's not really meant to occur in the channel. And this, so this is a fairly isolated population, the, probably the most southerly in the world. And uh, I actually discovered these dolphins uh, back in 2007. I thought it was a real one-off fluke, but we've managed to see them or others have seen them every year since. And uh, through mark recapture analysis, we think that it's been up to about 150 animals there. This is one of the sightings from a nature trip trip a few years ago so the animals uh, if they are around will come to bow ride around the ship just a bit on the ecology you know why is this cold water dolphin that has a northern distribution in Lime Bay uh, that's because uh, it's essentially very similar habitat to central northern North Sea the orange and yellow there are sandy seabed habitat which the dolphin seems to be associated with. Also, there's a lot of First and Second World War wrecks in there where the uh, sort of cod, haddock and whiting, the white fish that they eat, find a sanctuary there and occur in large numbers. But the other thing is that although the water temperature seems too warm, the water is actually stratified in the summer and, the, and though, so although it's warm on the top, it's actually cold underneath where these dolphins feed. And so in a, the, this stratification in the water, this temperature gradient allows a cold water dolphin to live in a, a relatively warm environment. Yeah, white beak can't be guaranteed anymore, unfortunately. It's probably declined with with as sea temperatures have rises. They are still around, but they're quite elusive now, so we don't see them on every trip. But we always see good numbers of common dolphins, and if the weather's smooth, porpoises as well. And usually see most years minky whale as well. This is one taken in the middle of Lime Bay a few years ago amongst a sort of feeding frenzy of there's hundreds of gannets and shearwaters there. It's quite a spectacle. If you ever see David Mills, uh, Nature Trek's managing director book on a trip, go with him. He's incredibly lucky on, on these Lime Bay trips. He's absolutely cleaned up the couple of times he's been out there. This is David there uh, watching a basking shark. Probably my best ever photograph from Lam Lime Bay was a really lucky encounter with a 350 pound thresher shark, which jumped out several times. Unfortunately, I had my camera in the wheelhouse, so I had to run in there, come back out. I only took two shots of it, but this was one of them. So uh, really lucky. I put this out on Twitter and there was a bidding war with the tabloids to, to buy this photograph. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it, it, it sort of went all around the world, got sort of uh, 30,000 hits on the Lad Bible and various other things. So Lime Bay is a very good place for threshers, particularly in June and July. The other thing you'll see on this trip is 
usually and increasing numbers of this globally and critically endangered Balearic shearwater. And this trip and the Weymouth one, they're probably the, some of the best places in the world to get views of this Europe's rarest seabird. OK, the second trip is from Weymouth. It, and this is, uh, well, the boat we have used in the past is called Snapper, but it's just changed now to the Katrina. But it's a similar, similar comfy vessel with forward viewing and a very able skipper, Luke Pettis. And uh, so we leave from Weymouth. It's another full day trip. Uh, and we've got quite a few options there. We can go east along the beautiful Jurassic coastline. But we usually uh, sail past uh, Portland, the Isle of Portland, around the bill, and then head out west into Lime Bay and do a bit of a loop. But again, we work with the weather, with the uh, sea surface temperature, plankton conditions, and where the fishing vessels are. This trip gets off to a good start because uh, for the last three years, there's been a resident pair of bottlenose dolphins and this is probably the most reliable place in the UK for this dolphin so uh, the you know you can almost get, I've never not seen them put it that way and I've done about 30 trips the last uh, three years and uh, so there they are the locals name them Harry and Wills it's probably a bit inappropriate now they're not really the best of friends are they but uh, they were associated with the cruise ships when the pandemic was on but now they've moved, settled into Portland Harbour now those cruise ships are back in business and get some incredible views here's one uh, eating a conger eel and I, I've posted quite a lot of pictures of these dolphins on Twitter but I tend to uh, go for the spectacular shots but in 2000 21 uh, Les Mears on a nature trek trip with me took a fairly routine fin shot you know something like this and uh, a, a whaling dolphin expert who works for whaling dolphin conservation Charlie Phillips said I recognize these two and we found out the true identity of Harry and Wills uh, it's actually a mother and calf pair not a pair of brothers and uh, the mother on the left there was born in 2009, the calf in 2016. And they lived in the Moray Firth over the whole period, but then suddenly vanished in 2018, appeared in Weymouth in 2019. And but it took another, you know, two years or so before people realised uh, where, where what they were what they were and actually that's the first movement documented of dolphins between the Moray Firth and the channel okay uh, just a couple of other things on the trip the shambles bank is a uh, one of the best places in the UK to see Paul Beagle sharks in June and July around the the race where you get this choppy water and a lot of marine activity it's a good place to see bigger pods of bottlenose dolphins as well as commons pictured here and harbour porpoises in the Portland deep. And you get these uh, major feeding frenzies of gulls and sometimes shearwaters and terns on the flood tide. Really is quite a spectacle. And But the birds just come in like this and then once the tide changes, they're gone. As we met, move further offshore into Lime Bay we get common dolphins usually and plenty of seabirds balearics again and things like storm petrels both of these trips in Lime Bay have cliff nesting seabirds and grey seals so there are two other additions and on the Weymouth trip it's the nearest place to London where you can see breeding puffins uh, we we head over towards Swanage and Dancing Ledge, where there's a few pairs uh, still nesting. 